Hi, I'm Matt Roberts, and welcome to All Things Connecticut. Today we've landed at the New England Air Museum. Connecticut has always played a major role in the world of aviation, with several companies like United Technologies, Command, and Doman Helicopters being located right here in the state. All of those and more are represented here, where you can spend an entire day exploring an amazing collection of aircraft and some interactive exhibits for all ages. We'll show you around and reveal how you can find yourself behind the controls, too. Coming up, Ed Wurzbicki visits a dynamic local dance theater with new work and new digs. Eric Clemens demystifies the sport of curling, and I'll saddle up with an organization that understands the power of giving. But first, let's take a look at Treading Lightly. For decades, reports from all corners of Connecticut, people claiming to see the elusive mountain lion, but never a confirmed sighting. Until now. Turning up first in Greenwich, of all places, the swanky suburb of New York more suited to movers and shakers than reclusive predators. Then making its way to Milford a few days later, where it's killed by a car on the Wilbur Cross Parkway. put a great, great deal of effort trying to determine where this animal came from. The official word from the agency that tracks wildlife here in Connecticut? A rare case of a cougar that wandered from Wisconsin in search of a mate. That's where his head was. But for the people who swear they've seen one, just more proof mountain lions are among us. Kind of jumped over the top of the guardrail and rolled off. An early morning in late October. East Haddam's animal control officer, Michael Zaki, responds to a complaint about a barking dog. He's buzzing along Route 149. Something walks out in front of me, and I start at the head, and all of a sudden, I focus on the tail. And in between there, I saw a large brown body, a sway back, the shoulder blades, the big paws. There's no mistaking a mountain lion, none. Essentially, the exact same story told by this Greenwich Emergency Medical Team at the beginning of their evening shift in early June. We're driving down King Street on the way to uh, Greenwich Hospital to get supplies. The mountain lion jumped out into our lane, stopped, and then jetted right back into the residential area. It was large, long tail. It was freaking big. People in the houses had come out, and they were all out there with their kids and they told us that it run up the path towards the Brunswick school. Then he was spotted roaming the woods behind the private boys school. I spoke with one witness who didn't want to go on camera but he told me he's an avid hunter and he couldn't believe his eyes. This is the only photo witnesses at the school managed to get. Not great but much better than Michael Zaki. As far as the DEEP is concerned he has no proof whatsoever even though a field officer came out to investigate. Ultimately, he was given the company line. No breeding population is exactly the term I was given. We've spent a lot of time trying to verify reports, and every time we've done that, it's turned out to be another species. Markings are obvious bobcat markings to somebody that's familiar with them. Spots on the insides of the, its legs, it's got the white behind the ears. Paul Rigo basically scoffs at the idea that mountain lions populate Connecticut. We're looking for footprints, we're looking for scat, something that we can test. Bo Ottman's on a mission out to prove DEEP wrong. He commits 20 or more hours a week hiking the Farmington Valley, scouring trails. Ever since 2007, we've collected 300 sightings in the Hartford and Litchfield counties alone. According to Bo, these are their tracks and this is their kill. There could be 50 cougars in this state. You think there are 50 cougars? There could be in the state of Connecticut, absolutely. For animal control officer Michael Zaki, what he saw with his own eyes was confirmation enough. If so many people see it, they must be here. It's not Bigfoot, it's a mountain lion. For Treading Lightly, I'm Christina DeFranco.
Welcome back to the New England Air Museum, which is the home to a number of unique treasures. From a biplane built by a 17-year-old to this incredible Connecticut original, the last remaining four-engine American flying boat, the Sikorsky VS-44A. It was donated by its previous owner, actress Maureen O'Hara, and restored to its original condition. Coming up, we'll visit another star attraction here at the New England Air Museum. But first, let's check out Spotlight on the Arts. There's a storm brewing in the garden on Arbor Street in Hartford, where the power of ritual becomes a reason to dance. Ritual is about repetition. Performance is about repetition. You do it, hopefully, more than once. You keep coming back to this experience in this place with these people in this way, saying those words, doing that movement. By weaving together modern dance, media, gesture, and theatrical storytelling, the Scapegoat Garden Dance Company celebrates the human experience and gives meaning and purpose to the role of the artist in our communities. That's really the role of an artist, that you are the mirror to the community, that you sort of say, sort of reflect back to them. This is who we are, this is what we value, this is where we've been, this is where we're going. And um, the artists choose to be that. We sort of are willing scapegoats in that way. For artistic director Deborah Goff, the work should give credit to an audience's honest fascination with the human body and how keenly it communicates. When an audience member experiences the work, they're not doing it, but there are things firing in places that are familiar. And I think that we don't realize in our country how much we're hardwired to interpret movement. <laughs> I don't know what that was. I lied. Wait, can, I, can we go from bumping again? Yeah. Goff begins that process so by building oh, trust with her dancers and inviting creative and personal dialogue from the company. We're asked to bring our individuality to the table so that it's not about looking the same as somebody else. It's not about dancing exactly the same as the person next to you. The resulting choreography challenges that traditional premise in dance that perfection and beauty must be glorified in order to capture and keep our attention. In the world of dance, an open space means endless possibilities. But for Scapegoat Garden, it's an intimate space that has inspired a new kind of dance vocabulary, one that brings the audience inside the performer's experience. They're supposed to think and feel and be engaged with us and have an experience, which is why we like small environments where they're right there and we're right here and they can kind of feel like they're in it. Set within a total environment that Goff calls the hospitality aesthetic, this recent salon performance featured their newest work, Rebirth. It captures the rituals of the American baby shower. We don't just make babies in our lives, we make ideas, we make life, we make work, we make relationships, we make all kinds of things. Ultimately, it's about sort of letting yourself be in the body of the person that you're watching and hope that familiarity makes them feel safe to sort of be inside. With a look, an embrace, or a simple gesture, Scapegoat Garden's work resembles powerful cinema, both in close-up and full view. They reveal those important moments and events that we can all identify with and from which we Be hope to grow. Regeneration. For Spotlight on the Arts, I'm Edwards Bickey. Here it is the crown jewel of the New England Air Museum, the B-29A Super Fortress. It's an incredible gem that just has to be seen to be believed. The museum obtained it in 1973, but the plane was damaged and the museum destroyed by a tornado in 1979. 
The museum opened its current location in 1981 and with many years of hard work brought this incredible aircraft back to its original condition. I was able to get a private tour of the inside of this plane, even though it's not usually open to the public. And even though the restoration is ongoing, the detail is unbelievable. Right down to the little labels on all the switches. These guys are serious. We'll be back, but first, let's go to the power of giving. Here in Old Lyme, there's a 120-acre, fully equipped equestrian facility that's created a path to hope for people with disabilities and challenges of all kinds. High Hopes Therapeutic Riding is an organization that understands the power of giving. High Hopes is a magical place, a place where humans and horses work together to help children and adults with disabilities. Right now, we serve 230 people every single week. Nice job. Awesome. The physical thing that happens when a person sits on a horse, their pelvis is moved in a manner that mimics normal human gait movement. So that time on the horse, all of a sudden their body starts to say, yeah, this is what it's like, right? Now I know what to do. So we'll start to see changes in posture, balance, body awareness. High Hopes is able to maintain its world-class facility and serve so many riders because of a group of over 600 dedicated volunteers. Volunteers are our lifeblood. They really are. They give so much to us each and every day. One of those volunteers is Sharon Torrenti, who has been giving her time to High Hopes for nine years. She spends many of her hours working directly with young riders. A lot of children, when they first get on the horse, have a little bit of fear. And as soon as that fear goes, they just blossom and they, they start to listen to the instructor. Some, they're here just to be able to talk, to, to say something. They're very quiet. And as soon as they start to trot, then they start to talk. And their writing skills improve so much. It's just a great thing to watch. Children make up a large percentage of High Hopes riders. And the wide range of challenges that riding can help with has made the organization a favorite of school systems. They have found the environment of the working here with the horse has been successful in um, achieving gains in speech and language, social skills, behavior. The children find it absolutely enthralling. They get to ride a horse and you'll see maybe we'll sit sideways or backwards. And they work with their volunteers who are familiar with each of the children and what they're working on. So we're constantly building skills. Is that his tail? He's wet from being out in the rain. What do you tell him? Walk on, walk on. We're working on things like language, expressive language, receptive language, turn taking, eye contact. Parents who bring their children to High Hopes see a sense of confidence develop in them as well. You see children whose confidence builds because of a sense of um, control that they have over the horse and a sense of partnership. The other thing is the children know from their horse, from their volunteers, from their peers that they're accepted. The benefits <laughs> of therapeutic riding at High Hopes extend far beyond the riders. Our volunteers bring a great deal, without which we wouldn't be able to operate and do what we do, and our riders wouldn't have what they have each week. But our volunteers tell us that the reward for them is tenfold. Feel good? What are you going to tell your horse? Look. Very nice. Horses are magic, and the people who work with the children, they bring that magic out. It's just wonderful. The restoration projects never stop here at the New England Air Museum, and it's all made possible by a group of knowledgeable and hardworking volunteers. In fact, when you visit the museum, you can actually get a private tour with one of those volunteers. And now, let's go to Eric Clemens with Inside Out.
Just what is curling anyway? Well, if anybody knows, the folks at the Nutmeg Curling Club do. But before they start playing this Winter Olympic sport invented in 16th century Scotland, I had to learn a bit more for myself. Most of the equipment you'll need is usually provided by the club you join. There's the sliders made of Teflon or duct tape, the latter is usually for beginners. There's the stabilizer to help with balance on the throw. You'll need a sweeper to help your teammates when they throw. And of course, we can't forget the 42-pound polished granite stone. Me? Well, I got a crash course, if you will, on throwing the rock. Yeah, now your left foot's going to slide out, and at the same time, you're pushing off with your right. Okay. Left foot slide out. And push off with your right. <laughs> Not too okay. great. I wasn't too good on my second or third attempts either. Slide forward and keep your foot flat. There you go. Now push off. There you go. That was better. It takes about four or five times sometimes for the body to get it. Perhaps I could get it by sweeping like the guys who play this game for real. Seemed easy enough. Sweep. Hard. Sweep. I was reminded of what shape I'm not in. Harder, this harder. turned out to be quite an aerobic workout. Up. After a much needed rest, I wanted one Step. more try at throwing. And then you just push off. Left foot back. And despite almost busting my bottom because of the slipperier Teflon slider, my throw was almost acceptable. Whoops, careful. All right, now, after the ice is prepared with a process called nipping, we can get on to the real curling. But first, the object. The circle is called the house, and what we're trying to do is get as close to the center, which is called the button, as we can. And any rocks that are closest to the center, once all 16 rocks have been thrown, those are the ones that will score. Ah, but there are so many more intricacies within this simple game and getting that rock closest to the button or the center of the house. It all begins with your team of four, including its skipper, who tells you what you should do with your throw and how much your sweeper should help the rock get to its intended destination. Sweep it. Up. With blocking, bumping, and strategic moves at every turn, it's easy to see why some call this game chess on ice. Every one of the Nutmeg Curling Club members repeats the same saying, that this game is easy to learn, yet difficult to master. And it's efforts to do the latter that keeps each and every one of these members coming back for more. Believe it or not, third year, I'm still learning. But I enjoy it, and I enjoy working with the Special Olympics program on it. Quite social. In the beginning, you shake hands, you say good curling, and you're, you're going out, you're competing, but you're competing yeah. amongst friends. And after games, which can be quite contested, it's back to the warmth of the common room and socializing, which may include an adult beverage or two, but never ever includes any hard feelings. It's something they've done at the Nutmeg Curling Club six days a week for 50 years, and the tradition is alive and well. With your Inside Out Report, I'm Eric Clemens. The New England Air Museum is a great destination for kids and families. They're gonna love it here. They can check out cool interactive exhibits, their very own airport, and some great photo ops. The New England Air Museum has over 80 aircraft on display, an extensive research library, and plenty of room for private parties and corporate events. In fact, I'm having my birthday party here. They even have nine special open cockpit days throughout the year. Today, the museum is hosting an event called Women Take Flight which celebrates the pioneering women in the history of aviation, as well as their important roles today. I just guessed uh, that I could fly a helicopter when I was a kid, and I was afraid to tell anyone because I thought that they would make fun of me. So this is great. I wish they had this when I was a kid. To experience it all, you just have to check it out yourself. I'm Matt Roberts. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next week on All Things Connecticut. To see more All Things Connecticut, visit our website at cptv.org. Keywords, All Things Connecticut.
Things Connecticut is a CPTV production made possible with support from People's United Bank. With additional support for the power of giving provided by Newman's Own Foundation.